Integrated Infrastructure Investment Trust, that's Indigrid, had announced expected distribution per unit to its unit holders. Pratik Agarwal of Indigrid joins us with the fine print. Um, hi, Pratik. Thanks so much for joining in. Uh, so the distribution guidance right now is what, around 11% on an annualized basis on the listing price of around 100. Do you think uh, this is a bit conservative? And also this is assuming what dividend payout ratio? So just to get a quick recap, uh, India Grid Trust is an invite of power transmission assets. Uh, power transmission assets offer a 35 year fixed known cash flow without any throughput risk. Uh, the strategy and the goal of India Grid Trust is to provide stable and sustainable cash flows to investors. So in line with that, what we have done as a management team is gone out and given guidance on this, on this financial year's distribution, which amounts to roughly 9.2 rupees, which is an annualized of 11%, like you said. Uh, this, uh, as we've committed, that we will be distributing, like to distribute everything that the, that the two assets earn, and this guidance is in line with that. Okay, you have guided for a 3 to 5% distribution growth going forward. How will you achieve that? And if new assets are added, do you think this is a bit conservative? India Grid Trust has a right of first offer on another uh, eight assets that belong to the sponsor, Sterlite. And the first three of those are expected to be ready for uh, transfer into Indy Grid in this financial year. Uh, as we have guided at time of the IPO roadshows, uh, we will aim to achieve a 3 to 5% DPU growth, which is distribution per unit growth, uh, through the drop down of the first year, the three assets. Um, with regards to uh, why it's 3 to 5%, so let's remember that uh, India Grid Trust has to raise either debt or equity, in this case debt, to finance that entire acquisition. And hence, net of the debt obligations, the invit uh, in holders will have a 3 to 5% accretion in their distribution. Well, uh, Pradeek, you mentioned uh, two to three assets will be ready for acquisition in this year. So we can expect the completion of this acquisition in this year itself? I can't, uh, you know, give a definitive answer to that question because uh, as per the process laid down by SEBI, every acquisition depends on a unit holder approval. So therefore, we will, of course, take this up with our board and with the unit holders. But uh, yes, if all goes well, we would like to be able to execute those three uh, transactions. If you can guide, what can these assets add to the EBITDA going forward? And currently, what is the EBITDA that you're projecting? Rough EBITDA, again, these are very rough numbers. Exact numbers are there in the document. The, the, the rough EBITDA at the moment is about 400 crores. And these assets will add about 200 crores to the EBITDA. But we must remember that these are largely debt finance. And hence, net of debt, they will have a, a much smaller impact on the, the DPU growth but still a positive and a creative impact on the distribution per unit. All right, uh, Pradeek, a quick word on the utilization of the IPO proceeds. Uh, has debt reduction already been executed? No, absolutely. As, as we had uh, mentioned in the document, the, uh, the proceeds have all gone towards uh, reducing, uh, to, towards acquiring the assets, reducing the debt at the asset level down to uh, about 25% uh, debt, debt to assets. And also some of the cash has gone up to the sponsor to retire their debt and, uh, and, and invest in future projects. So that have all been executed uh, within a week of uh, the IPO. Okay, one of the upside potential which is spoken about in the market is a tariff revision. Anything in the pipeline there? We do have a, a potential. So we already have a positive tariff order that has come through for one of our assets, which is uh, making good our uh, cost increases on account of force measure and change in law. Uh, this tariff order has come through, uh, but the payout of those uh, additional tariffs as well as arrears uh, has not come through yet. We are, uh, as a management, we are not yet guiding on when that is likely to come through, and hence we have not included that in our base guidance. Okay, then, so uh, what can be the annualized addition due to that tariff order? I'll have, to, I'll have to look at those numbers and come back. That, that's something I can't discuss yet till I discuss it with my board. But uh, it's definitely DPU accretive, net of dilution. Okay, thank you very much uh, for joining in.